Hello and welcome to yet another cast. For your day, I have a 3-3 played on the map gen and thus um, and the matchmaker on that note. I want to say 3v3 played on the matchmaker and thus the map gen, but yeah, I I scrambled up the words but, but uh, through that, sorry about that. It looks it was a 20k base, but it's um the border is quite big, so I think this may be 12.5k. But we have team 2 up here in the north, team 2 down here in the south, and let's get into planned actions. On the east side north position for team 1, we have the Gaming Pie, fellow content creator and brother, I'm probably gonna have his link down in the description, um, who is um, going, uh, who also sent me this replay, in blue, uh, who is going Cyprian and opening first land. Then to the west of that, also going Cyprian in uh, purple, and opening first land as well, we have Riga113, probably just gonna refer to them as Riga. Then to the south of that, going UEF, we have Kleinheld in dark blue, also opening first land. And for team 2, on their western north slot right here, also going UEF in red and also opening first land, we have Kandako. And then in the back air slot, to um, uh, east of that, in orange, going Aeon and also opening first land, we have Daimonorus. Wait, no, not Daimonorus, Daimonorus. For some reason, I always have difficulties with names like these, I don't know why. And anyway, to the north of that, also going Aeon in uh, Burgundy Red and also opening first land, we have Naglink. So, two Cyprian, one UEF for the northern team, two Aeon, one UEF for the southern team. Uh, no Seraphim at all. And our each team only access to two of the tags. Right. We do have some plateaus right here in the middle, though those do not seem to provide any notable value as there is no reclaim on them. So, I guess the only reason to actually maybe drop them is to get some. Uh, T2 RT on them or something like that. Basically just deny large areas. A few maxes, not too many. It's a bit unusual for the map gen as it usually prefers to have larger max uh, numbers. And I think reclaim... Yeah, it's not too much reclaim. Again, also somewhat unusual for the map gen, I think. You usually see a bit more re uh, reclaim on the maps. There is another large um, collection of maxes right uh, here in the back areas, so I think this may have uh, this may be a forceborn map. As I think that's one of the settings that's usually used for the um, uh, 3v3 matchmaker. Though not too sure. While stuff is taking a bit of time to take off, let's take a look at the ratings. We have we are uh, spanning from 647 with Daimonras uh, for the southern team up to 1.1k for um, uh, Kynald and the northern team. So a somewhat high uh, so a rating range of roughly 400 rating points. Not 400, 500 rating points. Math is hard. And. Yeah, it is generally more low rated, not too surprising as it was sent in by Pi, as I already pointed out earlier, who is, of course, a bit low, uh, who is, as you can see, not that high rated. But I have checked through this, and while well, there are, of course, the misplays you have to expect at the rating range, it is quite uh, still of quite decent quality. So I wouldn't, uh, so, yeah. It's good enough for me. It has my seal of approval, which, of course, doesn't mean much, but oh well. ACU's uh, ACU for Pi has been moving up a bit. I uh, was about to say grabbing the occasional max, but no, it, uh, it just grabbed its first max. But also getting some forward land production up. More land production already, but up here, and I accidentally press the Windows key instead of the Alt key for my. Uh, for the uh, uh, marking thing. 
that was a, a bit of mess up. That ACU for Kainhardt also moving up, and so is the one for uh, everyone else on the oh, 42 front players of the Saturn team. A lot of scouting going out. Everyone wants to know what the, uh, what their opponent's up to. Never mind, not much scouting going out from the Northern team. But that is. There are still scouts coming out. So that is something that will solve itself. Now, again, as you may have already seen with the uh, length of this video, um, this is again gonna be a bit of a longer one. So, yeah, strap in, get, uh, you can go expect some slower phases, of course, as you usually have with the longer game, especially with the transition of mid to late game and late to very late game. Then upgrade going out for Pi. Nice to see. Um, always nice to see some Cypher and aggression with those commanders. Of course, more viable since the Cypron got the nano upgrade a while back. As that somewhat counters the lack of survivability that the Cyprons usually have. It was a lot rarer to see that before the before that actually got added, and it's nice to that more players actually do use it nowadays. But that is jumping around quite a, uh, quite a bit, and why am I not surprised? We have a power stall. We have a power stall at our hands for Pi. Right, he's also pointing out that he needs E. Yeah. How much power is he making? Not enough. I mean, obviously. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. I'm really not surprised to see that. But uh, looking down here, we also have a gun upgrade going out for Kandaka, and that's an interesting visual bug. And I think I got some unit selection or something like that that just appeared out of nowhere. Let me maybe just select something. Yeah, yeah, that fixed it. Maybe it showed me the unit queue for some reason. Don't know what caused that. I have no idea. It's not the first time I've seen that. I think I... I'm not sure if I had that in uh, while casting previous game or while watching through a previous game, but... It did happen before. And it is weird, but... well, it's a minor bug. Now, there are forces stacking up for both Kainhold and Pi on their respective sides. Uh, Maglink, instead of going for traditional um, usage of the um, Aurora, is going for a more unconventional strategy of spamming up flares, which are a lot less tanky, and also tend to trade quite badly with Mantas. Mm, but the increased mobility may... Maybe they were trying to use the increased mobility of that, the higher mobility. But you can see it's not too successful. In the meantime, also army massing right here for... Uh, for Kandako. And gun upgrade going out for Kainhout. As well as a T2, a T2 upgrade for uh, Kandaka as well. So I guess also wanting to use that commander as a frontline firebasing commander as well as is pretty usual for UEF. UEF being the firebasing faction. But yeah, the uh, use of the labs from Maglink is really throwing me off as it makes the army seem a lot bigger than it actually is, also the fact that it's just spread out over a large area. But yeah, it's just labs. And those really, really don't do well against a normal T1 spam against the main battle units, i.e., Mantis, uh, Strikers, um, Thams, 
at Auroras. Gun is about to finish for Kindhold. And has finished. Pi using that upgrade very aggressively, very nice. But of course not too hard when the opponent is just using labs, so fair enough. Just no, the ACU is pretty good at just dealing with that, so yeah. Uh, let's see, how is tacking going? We have tech to land out for Pi. So we can expect a transition to attack to spam very soon. Tech to air out is out for Riga. And currently still only tech one land out for Kynaut. Now on the southern side there is tech to land out for uh, Dem uh, for Demonras. As well as tech to air, they have both, okay. Uh, tech to land out for Maglink. That is going straight tech 3. I'm aware that a lot of players don't really like the um, uh, Aeon T2 land, though I think especially the um, uh, especially the Obsidian is really really good. It's really tanky and has some um, pretty okay DPS. And the players have some amazing mobility. But we also have some tech 2 production out from uh, Kandaka. Uh, God, having a hard time with names again today. But on the other hand, I just casted the previous game, uh, that sentence that was over one hour long, so... You have to excuse me, I'm also getting a bit of half brain now. After that. And it will just get a lot worse because this game, again, is over an hour long. But let's get back to the game. We has uh, we see a few um, units now pushing uh, through the middle right here to, I guess, try a pincer attack on Kainhold. Trying to cause some damage there, but the army that they have put up in the area will probably provide some pretty decent denial. There are now actually Auroras in the army for Maglik. So that is a successful development. And the ACUs for Kainhardt and Kandaka are now about to face off with both uh, currently with Kainhardt um, uh, picking off units from that army. And I think the, units, uh, the ACUs are about to start tangling. Slight writing mismatch on this side, of course, with uh, Kainhardt having uh, roughly 200 writing points on Kandako. But we also see the same on the other side of the map with um, Maglink having around 200 writing points on Pi. Who is going out very aggressively, now getting stuff on that ACU. A lot of idle engineers uh, around that, would love to see those being utilized to assist that. But soon, maybe? I don't know. Like, those really need to be assisted. Right, right, I think those are... yeah, that is just an attack a factory attack move for reclaim purposes. Though there's no longer anything to reclaim in the area. And small push attempted out from Pi through the middle, but that is now being stopped by some gunships out from uh, Demo uh, Demonras. Currently, no major T2 air production out from uh, or air production out from Riga. However, that was actually because they went straight to T3. Already at T3 air. As there are currently gunships coming out from. Uh, Demonras, I uh, was assuming that they didn't actually have T3 yet, and I am correct on that assumption. They built up s uh, some Swift Winds to maybe help counter some of the uh, T3 air that they may be facing. And, uh, uh, and are going to get a T that T3 upgrade right after that. But let's see how also how economies are looking. Well, maybe let's take a look at the 
current push coming out from Kandaka against Kainhardt or... Well, both you, uh, both sides seem to be pushing somewhat, so the current battle going on between both players. We now have some air support from uh, the Spectre gunships. But it currently seems to be going in favor of uh, Kleinhardt. Kleinhardt, not Kleinhardt. Sorry about that. Um, even though that they uh, they are currently still behind on tech, never mind, Mongoose coming in for them. So they do have tech to land now as well. But yeah, what I wanted to do was check on um, Eco. Kendak are currently leading the pack at 116, after that Daimonras at 115, Gaming Pi following that at around 108, after that Riga at 106. So Team 2 in general currently around 20 mass ahead. And let's see, there is a tech to max out for uh, Riga. I was expecting them to actually be higher eco deal than that, but apparently I was mistaken. I guess they just... yeah, I think Pi grabbed some maxes that were grabbed by a uh, Daemon Russ on the other side. One difficulty you will always have on map gen is just grabbing maxes and never mind, never mind, it's just not... it's just that they don't have all their maxes capped right now. That's the thing going on and... That's interesting. I now have a selection window. Don't know how that happened. I guess that's uh, just some of those struggles again. That's right here. That's off itself now, okay. There seem to be some observer bugs right now. And I don't know what's causing them. Like, I. I legitimately have no idea how I am causing these bugs. But game slowing down a bit. A few units being built up on all sides. Bricks now in... not bricks, um, Rhinos now in full production for Pi. As well as some um, emeralds. And T3 going up for Pi as well. Very nice, very nice. They currently also, uh, or he currently also seems to be building a, uh, upgrading a T3 Max. Also pretty decent. Can Daka pointing out the presence of T3 Air. Fair enough. And Rika getting some coins on the ACU. Also fair enough. I would expect uh, you upgrade to T3 and maybe even res upgrade after that. That's what you usually see from air players that don't use the command on the front line. Since that is the most effective use of the commander in the base just as more build power and more eco production. A small engage now between some players out from Macklings, so I guess they did not actually skip T2. Maybe because they saw the two units from Pi and realized that maybe that's uh, it's important to have something of the same tech level to counter that. Or maybe it's just their general um, way that they don't get any... that they upgrade the HQ as soon as possible and don't get the... and produce their spam on the normal land uh, or on support factories. That's what I was trying to say. But they will probably get the T3 land at T3 land early on. Now a lot of uh, AA out from high. Would love to see some more flag in that. He does have T2, but currently can't see any flag anywhere. Especially when your opponent is heavily relying on gunships. It's always nice to have some better A in there. And Pi moving up that commander that now does have Nano as well. To the front line, I guess to try and support against just a un an army that is still primarily T1 and does. The AC would be do uh, doing quite well against that. Though saying that, most of that T1 army are now forwards. 
did they go into full fuel production with their T1 uh, factories? Well, the T1 factories are currently no longer producing spam, so no clue. But it definitely seems like that. However, since that army up here is now pushing up, uh, up Pi is able to just run by down here in the south and push that way, as there's no longer anything opposing that. But pushing right into an oblivion turret, or multiple of those, should definitely stand back a bit using those vipers. But a army of places is also quickly dispatched and dealing with that now. In the meantime, this uh, uh, um, this area on the the western side currently not being too aggressive. We see some fire basing out from uh, Kandaka. We see some fire basing out from Kainheld. So I don't expect too much aggression on this flank for now. Maybe let's go up to plus one. Speed up this game a bit. As there is a lot of land aggression and stuff, but mostly a small skirmishes that I don't really think are worth pointing out. And thus, uh, unless I see a really, really big push coming out, or some uh, stuff like that, or big airplanes, I'm gonna be going over this a bit faster, as I don't think it's too interesting. We see gunships again utilized to uh, uh, defend against the spam of Pi. But ASF out from Riga already on the ball dealing with that. And again, small skirmishing, small push out from Maglink, however, I really don't expect anything to come of that. With that spam, Pi's commander is now reaching the front line. Let's see if we can get a push as soon as that comes uh, gets down. And also the other important question is, can Mackling see that commander? No, they can't. Well, no, they can. But, of course, um, the nano upgrade for the Cybran being a upgrade on the personal stealth, meaning that the commander is stealth and also has that increased HP, 8 pool and regen, making it a lot harder to deal with. as line of sight or alternatively Omni is required to actually see that. Not quite as bad as Cloak which, real, uh, which uh, always needs Omni as it uh, doesn't um, as it blocks line of sight. Or it doesn't block line of sight but it's not visible through line of sight. And, there, and for that the same thing goes as here that's also an upgrade on the stealth, so you still keep the stealth. As the way upgrade paths work in subcom is, you get the um, advantages of the previous upgrade and everything that gives, plus the stuff that comes from the new upgrade. So nano for example only gives 1.5k HP while uh, personal stealth gives, uh, gives 2k, but in total you get 3.5k HP from that since the, uh, since the effects of both upgrades apply. Same goes for example with Advanced Nano or Region Aura, T3 uh, and T2 upgrades, stuff like that. Basically all upgrades that just supplement each other. Now, small push of Rhinos right here, that has gotten, mostly that has pushed from here quite far, killing off a lot of factories here, as well as some, match, uh, as some maxes. Push, uh, pushing up here, killing off um, two more, I think that's six maxes in total, so quite nice. And also killing off multiple factories, that are actually producing furbers, I was correct that apparently DT1 production is just going complete furbers. But those are just taken out by Titans and Spectre gunships now. On the note of Titans, how's your production looking? Brick production out from Pi. 
So T3 has been achieved. There is T3 land technically out from Riga, though Riga has not shown any involvement in land production, which is fair enough as they are currently their player. And their opposing air player also only seems to be spreading around or demos around, um, throughout the map. Interesting strategy, have not seen that um, used any uh, at any point, but I mean, I understand why. It's definitely three button Zams and Redeemers are still quite good. And let's see, do we have T3 production out here? We do have T3 produ uh, production out from Kynehart. And I um, already pointed out earlier, uh, but earlier, of course, the Titans of Kandaka, so yeah, there's T3 production out there, and even a fat boy already started. Another important thing, Ravagers. The mighty UEFPD at the T3 stage, which outranges Flapjacks, I believe. Or a general, a general T2 um, tactical, tactical missile launchers. If we just look at what that can cover, yep. However, the Flapjack currently is just not visible to you to um, Kandaka power stalling quite heavily. So the Ravagers can target that, and there we go. And there it goes. The count on that being T2 RT, T3 Mobile RT, or um, uh, the for the UEF, the uh, Spearhead um, T2, and uh, not T2, T3 missile launchers, mobile missile launchers. And generally, the uh, the more advanced um, uh, stuff to crack firebases. Now we do have T3 production out for Maglink as well, unsurprisingly. Pointed out a bit earlier, but didn't go into that much. And they are currently building harbingers. I currently in the process of upgrading some uh, factories to T3 for, well, support factory to T3 to produce more of that. And also building a monkey lord. While Riga is building some gunships, some uh, whaler, gu uh, some whalers, and we also see restorers out from uh, Damon Russ. So both air players building gunships. Major difference being that the restorers out from Damon Russ will be more effective in dealing with the ASF than the whalers will be for Riga, as the A on the um, whaler is pretty pitiful compared to the one on the Restorers, which do count as anti-air gunships. And I believe they... yeah, they actually do have a higher HP pool than a Whaler. But Whalers are now used to try to harass space. Ping goes out, I guess, to tell Pi to push. And that's exactly what he's now doing. So I was about to say the priority should be to take out DPD. However, Raider did already go down and I'm just also under fire now. ASF about to land, something that seems like a very, very bad idea in this situation. Since there is a lot of um, T3 and the army right here still seems to mostly be um, made up of T1, that will probably not go over too well. However, we have some more T2 on this flank. Even with some flak, that goes down due to just push again. However, if it's moving in with the entire army, fair enough. The solution here would be to stay at higher ranges and utilize the missile launchers to take out DPD. An experimental finish for Kandaka, if I uh, have seen that correctly. Yep, the fat boy has finished. How's the monkey coming along? Just got in, want, went into the grain at 75%. So that's still a bit off. And let's again take a look at economies. Pi currently at the highest eco with 388 mass income. 
After that, Damon Russ at 345. And after that, Kandaka at. Uh, never mind, Riga and Kandaka are currently very close uh, at in the high 270s. But Team 1 currently ahead by around 100 Massacre. We also have a GC coming out from Damon Russ on that, uh, on that point. On that note. The note of experimentals, so that's a thing to watch out for. And a fat boy has been queued up by Kynald. And it's about to be started. And that SU surprisingly is still only at T2. Didn't actually go for T3 or um, the RAS upgrade. Now, Monkey for Pi has finished. Does he use his mass? No, he doesn't. Surprisingly, even while building that monkey, it, uh, he doesn't. He should definitely build more build power. Like, he needs it. Desperately. But don't at least allow him to build his monkeys a, uh, a lot faster. Now, Maglink has also been experimental, apparently. Probably Monk, uh, not Monk Lord, uh, probably a GC. This, I think I just saw that notification, though I currently cannot see any experimentals. But I guess we are now at the experimental stage of the game. And either I'm blind or I just completely, again, hallucinated about the existence of that, and never mind, here it is. And we have this weird glitch again. I don't know what's up with that. But the... Right, I think um, Daemon Ross finished their um, Magic C and just gives it over to Maglin, uh, uh, Maglink as that's the guy that's um, macroing the front line, basically. Or that side. Reasonable call. Now, Pi being forced to push back a bit. But with the presence of Briggs now at the front line, able to deal with that, and let me just go over, select some stuff so that I uh, that the uh, icons spanish again because that's stuff like that uh, tends to annoy me a bit. I know it's a bit irrational for me, but it's just a thing. Serenity is now coming out from Maglink. As you can see, the interesting thing about the Aeon T3 Mobile RT is that it can fire on the move. The only T3 Mobile RT that can do that, the, uh, uh, the ones of all other factions need to get stationary and uh, deploy first. But not the Aeon. The Aeon can just keep moving and fire while on the move. Now, Monkey is pushing in. The GC is um, just sucking up some of the spam, some of this army. The GC, due to the Stractor Claws, very, very effective in dealing with um, uh, dealing with land armies. As it can basically make um, the... Uh, as it can quickly just deal with large armies. However, the um, GC moving past the Monkey Lord and thus going down to the Monkey Beam. The Monkey does sweat off that, gets a lot of HP back, and can continue its assault. Currently only queued here, but definitely love to see that to get some other move commands and maybe move down here, but it's about to go down to the Restore of Fire, and there it goes. Not too sure if Pi just forgot to move it uh, to move flag in with that monkey lord, or if it got picked off by the um, uh, defensive force that was coming out against that. But as a lot of uh, some flag there would have probably done a good job there. I mean, to be fair, we even have some flag right here that was firing in some damage in the restore stuff of that was circling over that. But we have another fat boy out from uh, Kandaka as well now. And in the meantime, something that I nearly completely missed is that we have a large land push out from Kynhild against uh, Kandaka on this side. 
The fat boy doing what it does best and kiting away, pouring in damage over uh, or its firepower over long range against the army of Kainhardt, who is slowly taking out and withering away the uh, main force of Kandaka with that push. However, the um, uh, fat boy is doing the exact same to Kainhardt's army. Now, new monkey out for Pi, and now a line has been just queued up. And looks like uh, Riga is power stalling. Something you really want to avoid, especially as air player. Though, seems like they un completely underbuilt power and also just have some poor alignment for the air grid by the looks of it. This is just painful to look at. I mean, dear god. But Fatboy keeps pushing. Now that you see out from uh, Damon Russ. That's moving in to support uh, Kandaka this time. Fatboy is moving towards, uh, more towards north now. To counter Pi's activities. Pi's shenanigans. And things seem to be... This push is now about to be completely mopped up. Just by Titans, some Percy's, some T2. Little bit of everything. Including a fat boy. And game goes calm for, uh, again for a moment. Small skirmish right here. About um, basically just... Um, a small disagreement about the... Reclaim field and artillery fire. Are those. Yes, that is actually my asthma fire. Some stationary T2 artillery. Not the Serenity is lobbing in shells over long range, though. If I remember correctly, the Serenity has a similar projectile to the emissary as the stationary RT. Just a shining ball of light that's traveling. So fair enough. And... Something of Riga just killed Kandaka. I think that may have been air snap as there is an air engagement going on and Riga is the air player. And though I completely missed that. If you have seen what was going on, maybe just um, uh, tell me in the comments or something like that. I did not pay attention to the minimap. Something that I'm chronically incapable of. I cannot pay attention to many maps. Like, I want to have them because sometimes I do pay attention to them, but in 9 out of 10 cases I don't. Now, Monkey from Pi pushing into this force. I don't think it will get away with too much, especially not if it uh, stays at range. I think it needs to rush down the um, Fat Boy. Should definitely not stay at range, and okay, there it goes. Fat Boy pulling back now. Monkey going into the red, killing off quite a bit of this army though. And about to get one rank of veterancy at 10k mass cut. But that does not pay for itself, as the Monkey Lord does cost 20k. However, another Monkey Lord coming in through the middle now. Collecting with some other units. I definitely have to say there needs to be more flag. As there is now a clear major air presence out from the opponent. Same goes with, uh, with the force that was pushing on this side, by the way. There needs to be a lot more flag out from Pi. As those restorers otherwise will do heavy damage. Now, Sar started by um, Damon Russ. That will be... Uh, Honestly, let me just check ASF numbers. We are looking at a number of 46, never mind 47, one of them out of fuel, ASF for Damon Russ. Uh, and currently 32 for Riga, so Damon Russ actually had on ASF count. Well, with that, this uh, can be a massive um, tool of just aerial denial. 
being able to provide large amounts of um, DPS to those crown targets. And we see a major push now coming out against Pi right here out from Maglink with two fat boys. I guess this will give uh, the entire army was gifted over. And a lot of T2 and some T3 units pushing in as well. Right, I just I just remembered, yeah, um Kandaka died, so all the stuff got gifted over due to full share. Of course. Completely forgot that. Fair enough. Kandaka still um, uh, in chat pointing out some stuff, pointing out that Dark Blue may be the biggest threat as the highest rated player. Though to be fair, Pi also not playing too badly. Run by now going past, uh, or the units now running by, uh, past Pi's units. And with this amount of spam, that could cause a lot of damage. Some um, uh, some maxes are actually going down to that, though I think those frontline maxes are still only T1. But there's also now just some um, uh, bricks converging on the onto the units that are sort of uh, that have managed to run by, and now moving towards the front line. So. With that, I don't expect there to be too much success, and looks like the plan with that uh, push is also to pull uh, to look back around and basically clear up the entire area, get the safety of the other stuff. But the serenities again are throwing in some fire. Interesting use. I don't see serenities actually used that often, to be honest. Now, there seems to have been a push out from Pi on this side, as stuff has been forced to pull back a bit. And never mind, there is actually a uh, push coming out from Kainheld that is moving into the north and I guess coming into that, but Kainheld decides better of that and moves back. Honestly, one thing that I need to, uh, that's important to point out. In subcom, it's uh, important to commit. As if you, uh, since if you don't commit, like we, you can see right now here, you generally will have the issue that you may allow your opponent to just get free fire, uh, free damage into your stuff, without you having any damage, uh, doing any damage in response. Let's see, is there any stuff going on? More fat power production going out for Diamond Ras. They seem to have gotten access to some UF tech at some point. A emissary has been started by Maglink. Some standoff technology. Let's see, is there any stand uh, any counter standoff? No. And never mind, there is a new clone job being built up by Kynhild. The push against Pi seems to have been killed. And now Mechler from Pi pushing against these fat boys. Though against this amount of firepower I'm not sure if one Megalith will be able to cut it. It does have a very high HP pool and some pretty decent DPS, but three fat boys is a lot of firepower. Especially to, uh, with the fat boys having a, a superior a superior range and thus getting in damage first. But shield on this fat boy about to fail. Pi deciding to pull back for a moment, probably a mistake, especially since the shield on this fat boy did fail. He decides to uh, to commit again and actually kills off the fat boy, giving one rank of veterancy to this megalith, which is still about to die to fat boy fire though. At 26k HP. But he keeps using it to just take out the um, just that have started pushing in. But the first Maglev did just go down to that. Now we have a monkey on this side as well, pushing in. Countering some of the um, obsidians and general spam of Maglev. And we have some whalers now utilized against the spam of Maglev as well, and now moving in against these fat boys. Though 
there is now an engage going on from the Rostoros against the Swylos. The Rostoros also targeting down, uh, targeting down the Wailers with their main guns, not just their anti-air missiles. Their, uh, their impressive amount of anti-air mounts. Something, uh, um, something nice about gunships is that they can just target down other gunships with their main guns. That was also uh, basically what those restorers did uh, to the Swalos. One reason that was probably this effective. And yeah, not too surprising that. that. Now, experimentals. I think I just saw another a notification that another experiment finished. Isa has finished for um, uh, for da uh, Damon Russ. Though the uh, ASF are currently tangling with the ones of Riga, Riga not going directly for the dive on the uh, SAR. Since the SAR does not pose an immediate threat, that is understandable, however, they will probably still lose the iron gauge. So the important question is how much A do we have right here? And we are looking at uh, three bouncers and one banger from Pi. Which is a bit, but nowhere near enough to deal with a uh, saw. Now, Fatboy is still firing on the side and forcing the army of Pi back. And we now see the fat boys right here, which are um, pushing back the units of Demon, uh, Demon Russ. Or, well, not really units, as those are just Redeemers. But nice to see the um, factory feature of the fat boys being utilized right here, with, um, with Kainhardt uh, starting to build some uh, Cougars uh, out of those. The fat boy being able to build units even while on the move. And thus actually being able to uh, build AA while, um, while kiting or while moving, which is very much effective. Originally the fat boy was only able to uh, produce while standing still, like all mobile factories. But a while back there was a rework on how the mobile factories worked, which was honestly quite amazing. Allowing units, uh, allowing all these uh, mobile factories to produce while on the move by having the factory being a separate entity. Which I can't actually select because I don't get the normal selection screen in observer mode. Right. Ah, never mind, I can actually select it. Right here. On the back. And you can even just set a rally point with that without giving, uh, without it being misinterpreted as a move order by the. Uh, unit itself, something that, not a problem that mobile factories had in the base game, that you couldn't set rally points. I think the only mobile factory that didn't get reworked was the Megalith, since the Megalith works different with uh, building its units. And though it's also, uh, the Maglev is also building its units quite a bit slower due to just laying them as eggs with only 45 build power. Basically just constructing a building, uh, constructing units as a building. But apparently another fat boy has arrived in front for Kainhardt now. And they keep producing more cougars out of those um, back parts, providing more A cover. Which is definitely a good call since the uh, air threat throughout this game from Demon Russ was a uh, was quite big, so I can't see why they would be doing that. The emissary for Maglink has now finished, and uh, let's see where is that firing. Here we have the shell, and it seems to be going for the base of Kainat uh, now, who is either power stalling or currently power uh, or. I just got, uh, lost all shields. Looks like a bit of a combination of both, to be honest. Nice power seems to have been a struggle for a bit, though nukes are generally very power intensive. On the note of nukes, SMD, 
We have an SMD right here that is loaded. We also have one here that is not loaded, but I don't think that um, Kinehart will be aware of that. And currently a small brawl going on between two, uh, two fat boys for Kinehart and the singular fat boy for uh, Demon Russ. Uh, Demon Russ. And that will probably go in favor of Kinehart since two is generally more than one and also two provides more DPS than one. Just some basic math there. Now push through the middle from Pi. The decision of Pi is to directly engage this army. Honestly, I think that is probably a misplay. The better call, I think the better call may be to push down here and cause some economic damage. Go down here, maybe even threaten the airbase. Monkey does go down to the large amounts of spam and uh, to the large amounts of spam. Yeah, and the fat boy fire just uh, that's just coming in. As well as that looks like. Yeah, holy shit, that's a lot of serenities. That's also a lot of serenity fire. Like, that's just... completely overkill. And definitely very deadly to that mega nerf. Which will most likely go down to that serenity fire now. And that army. And that restore and those restorers and fat boys and everything. Not too sure how much uh, if that was actually worth it. Quite a bit of reclaim right here that can definitely be collected and I think there are engineers on uh, patrol moves. Yep. So those will definitely reclaim. But we have a nuke now going out and going for this production uh, position. Out from Maglink. And since I don't see any SMD there, so that will probably land. Is it covered by that? No, it's not. Never mind, there is an SMD right here, but that was not loaded. Was just about to load. But with that, that does go down, and let's see how much mass did that kill off. That killed off 22,000 mass. Now, artillery seems to have retargeted onto Riga's base. And those are two artilleries now. Yep. There is now a third one going up. Pi does not seem to have gotten the memo and has not built any shields. Though. I mean. There are some uh, army groups that require microing, I guess. But saying that those are currently not being microed. Okay, to be fair, th uh, those um, actually are those bricks. But I think you c uh, it's possible to micro three bricks and also do other stuff at the same time. And no mind, there is no push going on, uh, going out here. Again, right through the middle. With the amount of times that Pi push uh, just pushed right through the middle, I would expect more defenses. Um, just blocking off, uh, just around here, just blocking off this uh, choke point between these two plateaus. The bouncers are moving um, uh, at the front, which is definitely a mistake, since that way they will be picked off quite easily. The bouncers should definitely be in the back, behind the Megalith. Uh, never mind. I did not seem to have realized that, and uh, this is uh, keeping them in front. Maglev very unhappy with that cliff. Uh, never mind. It can clear the cliff a bit now, getting off mo most of its shots at some of that stuff. Okay, shields now going up in pile space. Nice. So that is not enough against uh, three, uh, not three salvations, three emissaries. Well, currently two, but the third one is about to go up. 
second nuke does go out for Kainhout. Did not check where that was going. That seems to be going up here. Let's see, is that covered by... That entire base is covered by this SMD. Which is loaded now. So I suspect that that nuke will probably be shot down. Yep. Bad news. Now, Arty is taking out the, uh, seems to be taking out the, uh, uh, these Maxes right here in the back for Pi. And has already taken out two of those. We are at 50 minutes, so let's take another look at economy. Team 1 currently still around 300 mass ahead. Pi, the highest super player on his team. Though behind both players of the opposing team, not too surprising as they have been sharing the base of their dead teammate, teammate between them. Or, why, wait, never mind, Demon Rust just has a lot of Zakus. You're looking at 17 Rust Zakus and 33 Engineer Preset Zakus. That is a lot. Though I think only the Rust Zakus should be countered, which provide. Damn it, can't tell. So that is plus 10 from that RAS, so that is going to be 11 per. How many were those? 19. 19 times 11 is a lot. Let's just keep it at that. It's a lot. Twenty would be two hundred and twenty, so two hundred and nine, if I'm not mistaken, just out of these sacos. And we have no access going up for uh, Demon Rust as well. So Southern team going complete into standoff technology, which I mean, I somewhat understand why. At the same time, they have been losing the land war. Like this, uh, like this entire area has been basically pushed back by a uh, kind now. That entire uh, that entire area that was originally held by uh, Kandaka, since the original split was basically uh, more along this edge, or along this area. And now we're more at this area, so. Significantly less, a lot more maxes that can be claimed by Kynhild. Though that are currently not being claimed, sadly. But we're also at over 50 minutes, probably over an hour game time, so uh, there is most likely some form of half brain now going on for the players. So I won't be too critical of that. At the same time, Pi's base seem to, uh, seems to have taken a bit of damage due to all the artillery fire. Like, there seems to have been something here at some point. And yeah, more shields going up, but that's definitely dangerous. Megalovs being still produced and put up. And still a lot of furbos just coming out from Maglik. They really seem to like their furbos. And they're also using quite a few MIS must just keep uh, Pi at higher ranges. Juicy expl uh, explosion of Zakus right here. I guess shields failed and the Zakus just took too much uh, damage from those Artis. And going down. That was probably very painful for their economy. For Riga. Kynhild now ahead on mass at 515. They're still behind their opponents with their uh, with their respective mass incomes. However, Team 1 stays ahead on total mass uh, produced, or not total mass produced, a total mass income. And a nice ball of ASF from Riga. Like, well, that's really close to an actual ball. More fat was thrown up here by Kynhild. But I 
don't see too much going on. Nobex is now over the base of Riga, but again, let's maybe go up to plus two and see how this goes. Merkling builds another experimental, it's a GC. We have three RTs firing, those could still get a, bu a bunch more adjacency to provide um, a higher fire rate. More experiments coming off the pie as well. And Heavy Shield going up for De uh, Damon Russ. Fair enough, Heavy Shield provides a large amount of uh, shield, a large shield HP pool. And they are now at three, um, at three Novaxes. So that's definitely going to be really annoying. But to finish, uh, currently working on their fourth. And at that stage, you are really, really hard to deal with. It's really hard to counter anything from uh, three or four Novax on as that can just provide lots uh, a long time of fire. And Advanced Shield has finished on uh, Damon Ras's ACU with 25k HP uh, coming just from that shield. So yes, that is quite a bit. New going here, I guess that was trying uh, the um, going with that was trying to take out the fat boys, which are wetted quite heavily. Push out from Pi right here, and now also counter push out from Kainhard. But for example, this psycho has uh, not this psycho, this fat boy has 140k mass killed. I think that uh, that one had around 60k mass killed, so definitely paying for themselves. 140k mass killed is just insane. I mean, this Megalith right here has uh, 34 mascot right now. Still about to kill more. Another Megalith coming in. And a whole bunch of fat boys and supporting spam army also moving in for Kynhard now. The three, um, the three Megaliths still alive for Pi. This one uh, is about to vet and just got a bunch of HP back. At 37k mascot now. And is the most damaged at, on, at only 32k um, HP left. Only in quotation marks because that's still quite a lot. Especially with 50 regen that still takes quite some time to chew through. But that's just the virtue of the Megalith that, is, uh, that you're not just not gonna kill that thing quickly. It's a Megalith, it's tanky. Tanky is basically just what the Magnet does. And probably also one of the reasons why the Magnet is actually as good as it is, because the DPS isn't the best in the world. I mean it's it's not it's definitely not bad DPS wise, but it's just this insanely tanky, so you'll generally have a hard time uh, taking that thing out. Especially also with the high range. This one is currently below 10k, so the, uh, the Maglev right here is about to go down at 48,000 mass killed. Yep, there it goes. This one is at 52k mass killed, this one at 29k. But I expect that this one is also about to go down, also below 10k HP, so... Yeah, that's not, uh, that Maglev is not long for this world. New Megalith in the back that may be pushing up to support very soon. Another one right here coming in th uh, from the north. Where there aren't actually that many defenses anymore. While saying that there are still quite a few T2 Artists that are definitely gonna be pounding that Megalith. But there are still fat points out from Kynhild that are uh, still pouring in damage into that uh, all of that stuff. And this Megalith now also at 53k mass killed. And getting still quite a bit more, about to get another rank of veterancy. Currently as that over 60k um, HP pool. And there goes another rank of veterancy at over, uh, just above uh, uh, 70,000 for a moment there. However, dropping back down due to the defense of that fire. 
Bad Boy is still in there, still pour, uh, pouring in fire, and about to take out the Nomaxes now. The Chef actually moved back to be used defensively. Maybe the first time ever you've uh, seen the Novax actually used as a defense satellite. Most players generally just use it as an offensive unit. But Novax is now dropping out of the sky. After being shot down. Giving that Nagalov some breathing room. And there goes the last one. That Maglev with now nearly 100,000 mass good and at 62k HP and a whopping 125 regen with 5 ranks of veterancy. That thing is definitely not good that easily. SMD that was protecting the base of Demon, uh, Demon Russ has gone down, so you're going out from Kynehold against that base. The Maglev's still um, getting more damage. And now at 112k mass killed. This fellow boy at 71k. This one at a whopping 136k mass killed. So this push was definitely worth it, getting in a, lit uh, a ludicrous amount of damage. This fellow boy here has arrived. Two more coming in from Pi. Right here through the middle. And. Yeah, Fatboy is standing still, taking quite a bit of Miasma Fire right now. But slowly moving forward and slowly doing more and more damage. Let's see, this one is actually still alive. It has taken a lot of damage and of course will, uh, won't get massive bumps of um, HP anymore since it can't vet anymore. It has achieved maximum veterancy. But still at nearly 30,000 HP. And 140,000 mascot. Around the same as this one fat boy. But here comes another GC. So this Maglev is about to go down. But not before doing some damage to that GC. And another nuke going out. Then for this base, there must have been some SMD that was actually successful in protecting that. I have not seen what happened what, uh, to the other nuke. And I think the artillery has now started firing upon the base of Kynald again. Taking out a few, quite a few Psychos, quite a few of these are really badly damaged. Maybe trying to kill that Stone Angel. A bug has been finished by Riga. And there's the nuke, and this time I'm pretty sure it will land. Yep, there it goes. And boom. There goes the main base of Demon Russ. We're now looking at a whopping 131,000 mass good on that uh, new launcher. Definitely worth it. The two Megaliths now coming in again from Pi. This will probably provide the HP pool necessary for those fat boys to turn around and start pushing in again. As with that. There's, uh, there's something just in the front of the tank. With the uh, 110k base HP. Holy shit, all these circles. There's a salvation actually trying to be built up by uh, Demon Rust, though. I, or Demon Rust, but I don't think that will finish as the um, as that position is now under major threat from the entire northern team basically just pushing in against that with everything they have and I don't think there are nowhere near enough defenses to stop these fat boys two more have actually moved in for kind out uh, to uh, there's, I don't think there's nearly enough to actually stop that. And there's another fat boy coming in here as well. Aren't these Maglevs still in range of everything and accidentally is that the front player? No, those definitely need to pull up. And that is exactly what they are doing now.
They are asked the miasmas being thrown up though, I suspect that those are probably getting way too close now to actually be of a great effect. As well as another um, magic C. However, these maglifts are barely damaged and both now lettered. And those will probably be able to just take out the GSC. Especially with supporting Fatboy Fire. This one Fatboy now at 170,000 mass code. Definitely utilized just like you should utilize a Fatboy. Kept at range and firing uh, at um, maximum range with other units stalking up damage. Though the AoE of the uh, Miasma seems to be very good at dealing with the uh, Fatboy even throughout, uh, through these shields. Or the lingering damage effect. So the fat boy does end up going down, though this one also at over 100k mass cut. Jesus. So much. But there is now an army of Torsis as well as some uh, cheap uh, strikers. Pushing in at Arnok, just getting into the main base of um, Makrik. Taking out Zakus and immediately threatening those Artis. Even with the Sauropos moving in and Strat Bombers, so that we will see a Strat Snipe. Merkling probably going just uh, just about to go down to that. Yep. Merkling going down to a large amount of Strats. Epak does actually get shot down by AA, uh, by the AA in the area, I believe. Since there are quite a few Sams. But that just leaves Damon Russ. Facing two Megaloths. Four fat boys, never mind, three maglifts, there's another one coming in. And. well, a overwhelming air situation. Also, since they were gifted over, the emissaries still were reset to their original position and now have to retarget. Which does take some time. A lot of cycles going down. 120k masket on this one maglift again. And there goes the issue of Damon Russ to Gaming Pie. Right. So, with that, Northern team does win. Without actually losing any players. I guess that just shows why you shouldn't turtle up too much and should always keep, a pressure, uh, keep pressure on your opponent. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this cast. There are going to be more casts like these, so if you want to be notified when those do come out, you can always subscribe, it's free. If you enjoyed it, uh, you can also like the video, or don't. Yeah, uh, this was casted live on Twitch, link to that will be in the description. In the description. And uh, as I already pointed out earlier, also link to Pi's channel will be in the description as he does do his own content. Generally more gameplay stuff, the occasional cast, but generally gameplay which is also recorded live. But yeah. I think this game was also from uh, from one of the streams, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, hope to see you again in a future cast or stream, and till then, bye!